Alléluia, Alléluia, Alléluia. I have chosen and consecrated this house, says the Lord, that my name may be there forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recall the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the feast of St. John Lateran, Lateran, which is the cathedral basilica in Rome. It's not St. Peter's, you know. And so we're not celebrating the feast of a building because as you heard in the scripture, we are God's building. We are the living stones that God is building his temple with. And as you heard in the second reading from 1 Corinthians, Jesus Christ is that foundation upon which the temple is being built. And each of us has to be very, very, very careful how we build upon that because we're accountable. So I'm going to try to do in a couple of minutes, okay, to explain to you in a couple of minutes what the whole sacramental life of the church is all about. So pray for me. So in order to understand the readings that we heard this morning, especially from Ezekiel, we need to go back to the book of Genesis in the second story of creation and listen to what it says. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was no field shrub on earth and no grass of the field had sprouted, The Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil. But a stream was welling up out of the earth and was watering the surface of the ground. It's in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was the center of creation. And this water that sprang up from the ground, okay, was the life giving substance that God had created to give life in the Garden of Eden. And you know how the story of creation goes, that Adam and Eve fell out of grace with God, and so they were escorted out of the garden. And it says in verse 24 in chapter 3, that when God expelled the man, he settled him east. Pay attention to this. He settled him east of the Garden of Eden, and he stationed the cherubim in the fiery revolve, with fiery revolving sword to guard the way to the tree of life. 
In other words, they were not permitted to enter the garden again to eat of the tree of life, lest they would stay in that condition for eternity. So remember the water, Garden of Eden, the center of creation, and remember where Adam and Eve were stationed east of the Garden of Eden. So now let's go all the way to Ezekiel chapter 47 and listen to what Ezekiel says. Then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple. Now, the, what did Jesus say? Destroy this temple and I'll raise it again in three days. So the reconstruction of the temple in the Old Testament and the re-resurrection of Christ, who is the temple, is the center of creation. God is the center of creation. And so it says here, then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the facade of the temple was facing toward the east. Now in the old days when we built a church, the church was facing east. And when you came to church, not necessarily you and I, but I can remember because I'm old enough. When we came to church, all of us were facing ad orientum. We were all facing east. Why were we facing east? Because that's where the Lord is coming. And so the scripture says, this water flows into the eastern district upon the Arabah and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which make it fresh. And so the water which, flow, which flowed from the temple flowed into the pool of Siloam in the Old Testament. And from the pool of Siloam, it flowed into the district of the Jordan River and from the Jordan River into the Araba, into the Araba, into the Dead Sea to make, it, make those waters fresh. Now in the scriptures, the sea is symbolic for people. You've heard, this, you've heard the saying, I saw a sea of people. So what happened when Adam and Eve sinned? They died a spiritual death. And so when Christ was crucified on the cross, for he is the temple, and his side was pierced, what flowed out of his side? Blood and water. And when his side was pierced, the church was born. The blood is symbolic for the Holy Eucharist, which we celebrate, and the water is symbolic of what? The water's of baptism, those life-giving waters which flow from the temple into the sea to give life to you and I. And so the church is now the center of creation. And we who are the living stones are being sent out to bring life in the Dead Sea. I told you I was going to try in a couple of minutes to explain to you the whole sacramental life of the church. And I skipped over a lot of stuff. But you get the point. You get the point of why we should all be facing east. You get the point of why Jesus was sacrificed. You get the point of the life-giving water and blood that came from his side. And you get the point of where the sacramental life of the church comes from. And you get the point of how it is that you and I are given this new life in baptism and how we continue to be reinvigorated, regenerated when we come to Mass and receive the Holy Eucharist. And when you get the point now, go in peace. To do what? To bring life out in the Dead Sea of people. Does this make sense to you? This is what we have to start to teach. 
This is what has not been taught. And this is why there's such a crisis of faith. So we're not celebrating the Feast of Bricks and Mortar today because that church in Rome, the Lateran Church, is only a symbol for you and I, the living stones that God is building his eternal temple. 